Earlier, we did train test split and observed that there could be huge variations in test metrics depending on which observations are part of the test set. To avoid the high variance test error, a better way would be to run train test split multiple times on each section of the data and average the test error. This is the idea behind cross validation. First, let's understand how cross validation works. In the k-fold cross-validation, the dataset is divided into k-folds. Suppose k is 5, this divides the data into 5 folds. In the first iteration, one of the folds is used as the validation fold and the remaining folds are used to train the model. Cross-validation fits a model on the training folds and validates with the validation fold and measures the error or the deviation of the predicted value from the true value. Note that the example on the right is for regression, but similar metrics like accuracy are calculated for classification. In the next iteration, another fold is chosen as the validation fold and the remaining serve as training folds. Again, a model is fed and the metrics are calculated. This continues until each fold is part of the validation fold exactly once. The advantage of this method is, Unlike the train test split we discussed earlier, all the data is used in validation and in training the model. So when you have less data, cross-validation could be a really good option. But as the cross-validation trains and validates the model multiple times, it is computationally expensive and takes longer to run. So I went back to the earlier experiment where there was no separate data processing for training and validation data. For cross-validation, the split data module is no longer required as cross-validation by default splits the data into 10 folds. So let's remove that. And we will also remove the trained model and the score model as cross-validation trains the model and generates predictions within each fold. Search for cross-validation and drag onto the canvas. The left input port is for the untrained model. So let's connect this port with the algorithm and the right input port is for the data set, so we will connect the data set. Cross validation generates two outputs. One output is that of scored results, which contains the predictions, and the other port contains the evaluation results for each fold. You can have this evaluate module if you would like to know the performance of cross validation on the entire data. Let's connect the scored results to the evaluate module. Since the cross-validate model trains the data, it needs to know the label column. So let's select the income field and enter a seed value and run the experiment. Right-click on the cross-validate model and view the scored results. You can view the fold assignments for each observation. This value indicates the fold the observation was part of during validation. And to the right, you can view the scored labels and their probabilities. These values give some confidence on the predictions. They both are of feature type score, which the downstream evaluate module can use to evaluate the predictions. On the right port, view the evaluation results for each fold. These metrics are calculated for every fold and by comparing the statistics, you can observe if any of the folds have very high value or very low value, which would indicate that the model is prone to variations in the data. Ideally, you want the standard deviation to be low. And also view the performance of the model, which compares the true value to its predictions. Let's look at different feature engineering techniques for categorical variables. Say we want to predict the price of apple from its size. The first step is to transform the categorical values for size into numeric ones. So we assign the values 1, 2 and 3 for different apple sizes and train the model. This is called label encoding and it works perfectly well for this problem. Take another example. Here we predict ice cream sales from the forecasted weather on any day. We have some historical records on the sale of ice cream. Again, we transform the categorical values into numeric ones. 
but unlike in the previous example where there was an inherent ordering in the size of apples there is no ordering in the values for weather so we cannot directly use this encoded values to train a model so snowy is not two times more important than sunny or the thunderstorm is not four times more important than sunny hence we dummy code for each of the weather condition the feature is snowy as a value 1 when that day had a snowy weather and a value 0 for every other instance likewise we add a feature for the weather sunny and for rainy and for thunderstorm so if there are four different values in a column we get four different features this is called one hot encoding well after one hot encoding we get dummy variables that are highly correlated here we can predict any of the four dummy variables from other dummy variables this issue is called multi collinearity to get rid of this issue we remove any one column and still be able to account for all the combinations here although the feature snowy is removed the row with all the values as zero indicate that it is snowy let's one hot encode the categorical features before using one hot encoding let's combine levels in some of the categorical features like education which has 16 levels and occupation with 14 levels these are too many for the learning algorithm to effectively learn the model other features like race and sex have only a few levels so we will leave them search for group categorical values module and drag onto the canvas and connect with the previous module launch the column selector and select the feature column occupation i will replace the existing values with the new group that we will define specify a default level name all the values from occupation that have not been assigned a level will fall into this default level and specify the number of levels this will be the total number of distinct values in the feature including the default level since the default level is taken care of now we have only two levels to fill in i am naming the first level as professionals and it groups both executive managers and professors which has higher percentages of people earning well your grouping logic could be based on a business logic or just combining similar levels for example like combining all the occupations in the government sector into one or grouping levels with similar number of response values i choose to group occupation based on their similarity in distribution of target values the second level will be skilled and i place occupations where even a lesser percentage of them earn more than $50000 and finally the remaining occupations like clerical and housekeeping go into others where very few people earn well once the grouping is done run the module and it throws an error which is that the occupation column is not an allowed category okay the reason for this error is that although we made the features categorical some modules like apply sql transformation reset the updated metadata so to fix this issue let's use the edit metadata module again to make the occupation field categorical just before grouping and since we will be grouping for education as well let's include both and make them categorical run these two modules and this time it should run successfully just verify if the values are grouped into skilled professional and others now we are all set to do one hot encoding the module azure machine learning provides for this is convert to indicator values connect to the previous module and specify the column to create the indicator values for selecting this option will override the previously grouped values for occupation let's do that and run the module and check to see the three indicator columns for the feature occupation in a similar way i have also grouped education into three levels postgraduate graduate and school this will generate another set of one hot encoded features for the feature education 